You may know Smart Wool as the go-to brand for all things merino wool, from socks to base layers. Smart Wool has been keeping people comfortable outside for decades with some of the softest and ethically sourced merino wool out there. Well, on November 11th, Smart Wool is bringing back its limited edition Smart Wool and Grateful Dead collection. That's right. Smart Wool is dropping an exclusive collaboration right in time for the holidays, from t-shirts and hoodies to beanies and socks. Now you can have the next level of comfort of Smart Wool with all your favorite iconic Grateful Dead designs. So mark your calendars November 11th, that's 11-11, and shop the drop exclusively at smartwool.com. Loyalty, described as, do you care? And I care, and that's why I'm on this show. Comes a time, here we go. <laughs> I'm a sucker for O'Teal, man. I saw that same feeling that I have, that would he fill the void that I didn't even know existed. It feels so good to, as Ben said, to try to do something about an issue as opposed to complaining. If you can't help, don't hurt. If we could just all get out there and throw cream puffs at each other, maybe things, instead of bullets and, and <laughs> angry words, it would be better. When you stop laughing, you stop living. There's a worldwide surge in interest in mushrooms. It was deep, man. It's not that TM makes your mind quiet down there. It already is. We're just stuck up here. We've lost access. I'm jumping Jack Flash. Came out by the stones. So I thought, all right, perfect, man. I'm gonna drive, and I started driving through the neighborhood, and I got, I got a text from Mick Jagger. <laughs> People saying that you know what we do is non-essential. Well, playing those few gigs that yeah. you saw me at felt pretty essential to me. It wasn't like they were clapping from here. Is they were clapping from here. My view of things is that death, death is the last and best reward for a life well lived. Like you gotta, it's the strangest of places if you look at it right, you know? If you're liking what you're hearing, head on over to patreon.com forward slash comes a time pod and get your bus pass for an extra episode every week. What's up? Welcome back to another episode of Comes a Time. That's O'Teal. And that's Mike. <laughs> We had a special, uh, yeah, wherever he may be out there. Um, very special episode today from Conscious Alliance. We had Justin Levy. Um, why, I mean, start to finish, just like a like a goose bumper of a. This was a yeah. This was very important. I was saying I, I was looking at my phone this morning and it was just talking about the national hunger crisis that's going on. And sure enough, we have him on today, and it's just. Echoes no coincidences. everything. Yeah. Yeah, really. And uh, you got to watch this one. It's uh, it's definitely a feel good episode, but it's dealing with some really heavy stuff, really heavy stuff. But it's it's beautiful how his personal journey led to this amazing journey with Conscious Alliance and their whole growth and like how many people they started out feeding and what it's grown into is almost miraculous but that's the power yeah. that we're talking about you know that and a lot of common on. sense stuff too like mm -hmm. you know just the expire date on food yeah and uh you know the just the perception is reality of it we're all guilty you know you look at something and you're like oh shit this only has a day left i don't want it and then, then where does that can go you know so yeah. um just a, th a real, a real important one. I loved, I, yeah, his spirit, like right away, you could tell yeah. that his whole, like everything is into this. So, and those are the people that we need. So thank you, yeah. Justin and the, and conscious Alliance. And we'll in the notes, you can find out how to support conscious Alliance. And, uh, you know, Justin mentions it at the end of the episode. So thank you again. And th thanks to Osiris. We're, uh, here with them. So many great podcasts. You can go to osirispod.com and head over and, uh, join patreon.com forward slash comes up time pod. Um, your support means the world to us and, uh, we love doing bonus episodes for you guys. So head on over there and thank you to everybody who's already a member. Um, enjoy this episode and we will see you soon. Justin, thank you for joining us today. Uh, really appreciate it. Oh, thanks for having me. Is that a uh, a Van Gogh behind you? 
It is a artist, uh, a local Boulder artist who uh, did a play on uh, Native American Buffalo artwork. So nice. Yeah. Uh, that's cool. Even cooler Very than cool. a Van Gogh. Yeah. <laughs> Van Gogh would be tight. Can't afford it. I'm trying to run a nonprofit and make it all work. <laughs> and how's that going, running a nonprofit these days? Let's get right in. Yeah. Um, you know, Conscious Alliance started 20 years ago with a really simple idea of utilizing music and art to engage young people and multiple generations in the fight against hunger. Um, so 20 years ago at the Fillmore Auditorium with the string cheese incident, we uh, brought some barrels out. We worked with an artist uh, named Michael Everett to create a show poster that we very slickly printed at Kinko's at the time <laughs> and um, encouraged fans to bring 10 cans of food or a monetary donation to the show. And um this is, you know, well before social media and stuff. And so it was really the band, um, you know, amplifying it from stage and, and, and getting the fans engaged. And it turned into 4,000 meals wow. from that weekend. Wow. Um, just that weekend, just that weekend. Excellent. And, you know, we went for it again and, and we brought in 8,000 pounds of food, 8,000 meals, uh, with the band. And, uh, we realized we had something going. The band went to their management and said, Hey, we want this to happen at every show. Uh, their management was kind enough and, and supportive enough to say, let's not pigeonhole this thing that doesn't exist yet into just being our nonprofit. So they started introducing us to other folks around the music industry. And uh, we went on a full tour with STS nine. We started working with Umphreys McGee. Um, we, worked with Phil Lesh and friends and uh, Benevento Russo duo on an entire tour. And now here we are 20 years later, hosting a hundred art that feeds food drives with musicians and bands all across the country, um, delivering food to the communities where bands are playing and um, engaging hundreds of thousands of hours of volunteer time from music lovers who are on a mission to end hunger. Um, it started small and, and really took off. It, we no longer print our posters at Kinko's. Now people <laughs> wait in line for hours to get a limited edition screen print, you know? Um, but it really, it, it, it's really that simple idea of let's put an opportunity to give back in the middle of a good time. So you're a busy, busy man. <laughs> we're keeping busy. Yeah. That's fantastic. But we're busy. We, we also have the most incredible community of musicians and artists and managers and, and fans. Like it, Conscious Alliance is literally that. It's an alliance of people coming together to make an impact and make sure that no kid in the United States goes hungry. It must feel like a huge, huge family you know, at this point. Yeah, it is. I mean, uh, the people that I get to work with and interact with every day are, are not just colleagues. They're, they're family, they're friends. It's, it's a beautiful thing. Yeah. Did you go into that? Uh, when you, when you think back on, um, that first event, did you go into that first event with any, uh, estimate or, or hope for a poundage of food, did you say like, maybe we'll get a couple can like that totally blew your mind, huh? That number, that first show. Yeah, it totally blew our mind. And, you know, I, I was recently, um, so I joined conscious science two years after it was founded. I joined in 2004. And so it was two brothers standing outside the Fillmore, um, trying to collect food for, Pine Ridge Reservation in South Dakota. Um, Pine Ridge is six hours away from our home in Colorado. It's home to 40,000 Oglala Lakota. It is the same size as the state of Connecticut, but only has one full service grocery store. Wow. Oh my God. Wow. So fo folks are traveling for hours to go to a grocery store. Um, the diabetes rate is 800 times the national average. And so since mm. the beginning, um, Pine Ridge has been, you know, the heart of our founding story and, and where we still, um, really get back to today. I mean, it, it's critically important and no, we had no expectation. We had a hope, 
right? We got to hope to get done with these shows and fill a U-Haul and drive it up to the reservation, which happened. But I think what happened next and next and next and next, right? It's like that next big show, that next, I mean, we all have it in our careers, right? Like if we don't set a ceiling, um, it's incredible what we can accomplish, right? And we can keep being blown away, not just because of what we're doing, but because of what the community is rallying around, you know? And I, right. I mean that for multiple uh, industries too, not just about conscious science, but like we can keep being amazed if we let ourselves. Mm. Yeah, there's a, th- we don't get taught that in this society, unfortunately. It takes almost like renegade personalities like where did you learn that from for instance mine was intuitive i was well i guess i was kind of taught by my mom too but mine was more intuitive where did you learn that idea from i know we were joking about going into uh you know being a kid and, and stuff but um a few days before i was born my brain bled and i was born with cerebral palsy And for me, I was given a really big gift in that moment, which is the doctors told my parents, we have no idea what Justin's going to accomplish. So there was no expectation for me. So like everything was like a first, a moment. uh, And and that has um, persisted for me my entire life of like, I don't know, let's try. And because I couldn't do so many things on my own, learning how to walk four different times, um, learning how to read at age 21, like I always needed people. So when I had an opportunity to join Conscious Alliance at age 18 and then had an opportunity to lead the organization and take it into the next chapter, it was just an opportunity to develop a team, bring people together, let people um, do what they're really good at and lean on their talents for the greater good. So for me, it, it really did start at the beginning. Wow. That's That's a great thing to teach a kid. I mean, I, I try to teach my kids that like, you know, we always have that. uh, My son got on to me yesterday about it. I always use the word yet. He says, I can't do it. I go, you can't do it yet. You can't do it yet. Yeah. (laughs) You know? (laughs) Yeah. I have to do this. I always say, we get to, you know, I have to do this. No, we get to like, (laughs) we have that choice. We can say no too. Right. So do you have any siblings? I have three brothers. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And, uh, same, you know, my, my brother, Adam, that I grew up with, um, I feel really lucky during uh, standardized test days, he would uh, come pick me up from school and we would uh, head out to Colorado and go climbing or like head to the climbing gym or like go on a hike. And I never wanted to slow anyone else down, but I knew when I was with him, we could just rock and roll and go at our own pace. uh, And I could let go of the anxiety of letting someone down, you know, (laughs) like, Oh yeah. That's just a, a lot one. of it for everybody, you know? Yeah. So yeah. let not to diverge from conscious Alliance, but yeah. you know, as you drink your drink, how, tell me a little bit about your journey, like overcoming the palsy or living with it or. Yeah. Cause I, I wouldn't have known yeah. if you hadn't divulged it, you know? I think we all have a special story to tell. And I think, you know, I feel really lucky with the work that I get to do. Um, And I believe that we can all do something special. It doesn't have to be big, right? Like no action is too small. So it's about the ecosystem. Like if we all give a little bit and give of ourselves, right? So, you know, OTO, you play music. We set up a food drive. All of a sudden it gets bigger and bigger and bigger. Like, um, there's an opportunity, right? So, um, I really think that like, yes, we're presented opportunities in our life and yes, we have to be really bold and aggressive and go after them. 
like, um, we have to believe we have to trust. You talked about intuition, you know, all those things are epically important. And when we see those signs, let's fucking go for it. <laughs> yeah. That's the you thing. Know? You have to act on that. So do you think that is what really helped you overcome cerebral palsy and like just having that mindset of like, I don't know how to slow down. So like, I remember, I have a lot of memories from, from being a kiddo, you know, and I, I tell people and they're like, wait, you can remember like age two. I'm like, totally. Wow. So for me, it was like, all right, Justin, like take a couple steps and like walk. And I'd be like, I don't want to fucking walk. I want to run, you know, <laughs> like <laughs> nice. I'm going to run down the hall. Okay. Get back here. Like, and that the frustration of not being able to do certain things, but then like pushing through and figuring it out and having that moment that started this conversation, which is like just letting ourselves be surprised or in awe of what's possible. You know? Wow. Yeah. Yeah. I find myself being really falling in love more and more with not being able to do something. Like the first time it was with banjo when my wife left the country and it's just so alien, the tuning and everything about it is so different from bass guitar. And then it reconnected me with that feeling that I hadn't had since I was a kid <clears throat> of totally not being able to do something and then just scratching for it. And then when you hit it, you're like, ah, you know, and I was like, OK, this is great. So I flipped my attitude about it. Now I'm doing it with piano. It's amazing. You know, I'm trying to encourage a lot of friends of mine that are older that let music go. They have a sad story about when and I go, it's never too late to have a happy childhood, man. Like start now. Like it's just fun. Just do it for fun. Don't compare to anything. And there's, yeah. there's you know, that attitude. I mean, and you look at your story separate from conscious Alliance. And then you look at now the story of conscious Alliance with the same thing in mind. It's like, hey, man, that's kind of the key to life. I'm thinking, you know, it's just an opportunity to influence and try new. I um, we did a super jam uh, conscious alliance benefit this summer and we had Ross James on the gig and I, we were having a conversation. He was our band lead and he was like, you know, when I grow up, I want to be a bass player. So <laughs> if you want me to play bass, I'd love to, you know, <laughs> and I love that. Like, I just, you know, I love it. Well, and, and endeavors that set out to help people at, at this level, you know, no one should go hungry like that, that endeavor needs a spirit like yours that doesn't want to walk. They want to run, you know? So you're looking at a uh, event that maybe you're at, and then you're already thinking probably we could do this next time. We could do this next time. We could do this next time. So you're, you're like a born leader for this whole situation, you know? So that's really told, incredible. Thank you. I get told often to um, stop and celebrate, right? <laughs> and like, <laughs> What's that, that is, right? That is truly something that I'm working on of like, yeah, I'm ready to run to the next one, right? But like, what about the win? Um, what about celebrating 20 years of Conscious Alliance? What yeah. about celebrating um, 10 million meals served, right? Like, yeah. Wow. wow. 10 million. That's yeah. Amazing. You should stop and celebrate that. Even if it's just yeah. for, you know, a you don't have to bit. walk, just jog, just, you know? jog, just, <laughs> jog. Yeah. just power yeah. walk, just power walk to it. Yeah. Um, I, 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 you know, and it's, 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 this is a, unfortunately a fight that will always need to be fought too. You know, I mean, you said something earlier and I wanted to kind of, it, it kind of rattled me cause you, you don't think about it, but you know, you said what the diabetes rate is f how many times? Yeah. 800, 800 times. 800, 800 yeah. times. So wow. if, if you're in an impoverished area and you don't have the resources and the groceries and stuff, you're eating processed food, you're eating boxed food, you're eating what you can when you can, right? Mm -hmm. So the obesity rate goes up, the diabetes rate, like then getting to a doctor. I'm mental sure health, it, right? Mental, like, yeah. Um, anxiety, anxiety, the trickle depression, down like effect this. of all of this is just, yeah. and then if you're sick, you can't work sometimes. Yeah. Or if you can't, you know, or does an employer, well, it, it makes everything, it just adds it's more. It's just harder. It's life just, just harder. gets harder. Yeah. So in helping with 
feeding people, you're also creating like a more sustainable foundation for them. Like it's almost like you're laying bricks in other parts of their, you know, and have you seen that? Like, have you like what the feed, I'd love to hear about the feedback and the interaction with the folks that you're, you know, the food gets donated. What happens from there? You know, like totally. So again, you know, really starting by doing food drives, creating posters, leveraging bands and musicians and, uh, the artists, right. And engaging the fans. And, um, in 2008, we met Justin Gold, who had just launched a very small peanut butter company in Boulder, Colorado called Justin's. And oh, I yeah. Hope, I know I that. Hope, yeah, I hope by now you've had a peanut butter cup from them and some they're almond really butter. They're really good. If you put them in the freezer, they're, they're fantastic. Really yes. yes. So three employees um, at Justin's sitting around a picnic table trying to decide as we grow, uh, what nonprofit are we going to support? And, you know, they they all came up and they're, they're whiteboarding. And someone says, do you know about conscious Alliance? Do you know about Pine Ridge? They chose us. We've now been working together for 15 years. Um, that same year, whole foods bought wild oats grocery store and donated a million dollars worth of private label food to conscious Alliance. Nice. So we went from, from, let's get, Let's figure out how to get some food to like, holy shit. Let's figure out how to distribute. (laughs) We we should figure out how to distribute some food, right? So we leaned on our alliance. So we called board members. We called um, volunteers and and we did it. We distributed a million dollars worth of private label food across the country, expanding our national reach. Um, It broke us into natural food with with Justin. Um, We went to Pine Ridge together we didn't have any product to donate. They didn't have any product to donate. We barely had any money. They didn't have money to donate at the time, but they had time. And so their staff went and got inspired and they made the commitment to help us grow. And we went to um, natural products expo in Anaheim and Justin introduced us to a few brands a board member introduced us to Plum Organics and Plum came to Pine Ridge with us. Their CEO at the time, Neil Grimmer, got super impassioned while we were building a garden up there and called his friend uh, Jeff Church at Suja Juice and said, I know you're looking for your 12th charity flavor for Whole Foods. I found your nonprofit. It's Conscious Alliance. No question. It has to be. Wow. A year later, we went into that expo and launched the nation's first all natural and organic backpack program for kids. We had three brands, Justin's Plum and Suja, and we left with 10. And so (laughs) a long winded way to say when we started delivering healthy food to kiddos consistently, we saw and heard that the kids weren't going to the nurse as much on Wednesday. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Anxiety was lower. They didn't, stomach aches were down. On Wednesday, they weren't worried about where their next meal was going to come from when they left school on Friday. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like you have so many days of anxiety just thinking about where food is going to come from. And today we work with over 65 leading natural food companies. Wow. To stop their amazing product from going into the landfill because grocery stores won't buy it within 90 days of its shelf life, 90 days. Really? So I always say we were a bunch of assholes going on the road with bands, trying to like do our best at 18, 19, 20, 21. And we learned all this logistics from touring. We met all these hunger heroes, all these folks who day in and day out are feeding their community, making sure that their community is being fed, whether it's Nashville or Atlanta or Chicago. And we, we met, this is all through music. It's the power of music and connection. Um, and today we have semi trucks going across the country almost every day, picking up from brands, getting it into the hands of kiddos and families. And, you know, we went from barrels of food to moving 2 million meals a year. Wow. 2 million a year. 
So they won't do it because I guess all the natural foods will go bad quicker if they don't have all the preservatives in it. Like they want it to be able to sit there for eight months. That's what I thought too. And it's not, it's that use by best buy and sell by dates on packaging are mostly for brand vanity. They want it to look, taste and feel the best when you're purchasing it. At I was going to ask the target about, yeah. price, right? Yeah. I didn't know this. I, I'm a terrible cook. You all ever come out to Boulder? Um, we'll go share a meal at a restaurant. I don't know. Like, I, <laughs> but you know, there's I'm, a lot I'm, of good ones in Boulder. So totally. I think we'll be all right. Yeah. I'm sitting there at a conference on food and I'm learning about this. And, and it was that other light bulb of like, wait, we know people that know how to move trucks. Like, and we're asking these brands to support us. Well, this is a way for us to support our brand partners as well. It's a win-win. Like, let's stop one of the biggest environmental issues that's happening, which is food waste. Nearly yep. 50% of food is being thrown away. So all of a sudden, like unintentionally, amazingly, we've become an environmental hunger relief organization powered by music. <laughs> A triple bullseye. <laughs> like, what the fuck? <laughs> Nearly fifty percent of the food is that just an is that an American is that a U.S. Mm-hmm. statistic? Yeah, fifty percent of food is thrown away. Yeah, and it fluctuates, but it's it's high. It's high, right? So you know you Damn. have all these kiddos, all these families going hungry, and then you have food being thrown out. And I think what we learned during the pandemic is that. Hunger really affects people in every single community across the country. And that we're not as far away from hunger as we once thought. Mm. You know, during the pandemic, we had, I mean, you know, like the music industry shut down. So there's the artists, right? There's the stagehands, there's the bus drivers, there's the production workers, security guards, right? For a year and a half, Conscious Alliance was feeding production workers, the people that helped us build our (laughs) brand. But we were a safe place. And like, I'm so, I'm grateful that we were able to. And it makes me so sad that we had to, you know? But it made our alliance stronger. What's up, everybody? This is Mike, and today's show is sponsored by Sunset Lake CBD, a Vermont hemp farm crafting affordable CBD products designed to help with stress and sleep without breaking the bank. Sunset Lake CBD is a majority employee-owned hemp farm located just outside of one of our favorite places, Burlington, Vermont. For years, Sunset Lake was a dairy farm producing milk for Ben & Jerry's ice cream. We had them on the podcast. In 2019, they diversified and started growing hemp for CBD. And Sunset Lake CBD crafts products with hemp grown on their family farm and ships them directly to the customer, cutting out all the cost associated with getting on the shelves at stores. They have CBD products for every occasion and offer tinctures, salves, edibles, coffee, smokables and even for that anxious dog of yours they have pet products oh i need to get some for my dog that's barking all the time but Mm -hmm. i'll tell you this i use these the sour bears so good they are cbd gummies i literally no joke i take these every night they help me sleep And it's almost bedtime. (laughs) (laughs) Yep. And I still, as I said it before, I'll say it again. You go to a long show, you come home, my 42-year-old ankles are not what they used to be. And I rub that salve all over them and uh, put them up, enjoy a a nice cocktail, and uh, just let it ooze right into those sore bones. And you know what, folks? All you Comes a Time fans, if you check them out at sunsetlakecbd.com and use promo code TIME, T-I-M-E, you'll get 20% off all products. That's sunsetlakecbd.com. Use promo code TIME, 20% off all products. Sunset Lake CBD, farmer-owned, Vermont-grown. Thank you. Get you some. 
People, uh, I think one of the biggest problems with the country, and I know people say social media is a bad thing, but it's a, it's good in this way is that, like you say, we don't realize 50% of the food's being thrown away while there's starving people like really close to you. Like, but we live in this bubble. We live in these little bubbles, which I do think social media, while it can be an echo chamber, it can make you aware of stuff like that, that you didn't realize. Yeah. Like, Hey, there's everywhere. There's like kids going hungry everywhere. I mean, everywhere. It's, it's happening at your kid's school. It's, yeah. it's happening at the, yeah. the 50 schools we work at in Colorado, the 15, you know, like it, that's it's a everywhere. fascinating thing when you realize it too. And like, you know, just like you talk about the anxiety of children not knowing where their next meal. Like I just thought about myself in elementary school and like always had a sandwich in a bag or an apple or a, you know, yeah. thing of pretzels or whatever. And I, I guess I just, sometimes you don't think about the anxieties you don't have or you haven't yeah. had, you know what I mean? And then you go like, oh geez, I never even had to you know, whatever, even if it we was don't know butter, what we don't know, bread, you know what I mean? Like still, it's still something. It's, it's still something. something. It's still something. It's an apple, whatever. I, I go to it with my kids all the time. Cause they're, they're very finicky eaters. I'm like, you just don't realize how many kids would kill for this, but I can't get mad at them. They can't yeah. know what they don't know. Yeah. Right. I never had a day of worrying about what I was going to eat. We didn't have a lot of money. But at school or out of school, yeah. I was never worried that I wasn't going to eat. Yeah. yeah. That's a heavy. And but so even me, like living in the hood and all that, you know, I still had a little bit of a, a bubble as far as not fully knowing what all these anxieties are like. You yeah. Know? And, and, and you experience that as a child and that might set the foundation of anxiety or distrust or, or lack of, you oh, know, yeah. or just fear living in fear. And, yep. and, yeah, and, and really looking out for community too. It's like, if we're paying attention, you know, I, yeah. I remember the day I saw a kiddo rip his sandwich in half and put half of it in his mm. pocket. And it's for like later. at, at first dinner. glance, it's like yeah. that's for his brother or sister. Uh, yeah. That's, yeah. That's going home. Like that's yeah. yeah. You know, yeah. and you could look at that and be like, oh, I could, why'd you put your sandwich in your pocket? But when you know, and you like look deeper, like it's calculated in an amazing way of That's, I'm going to do what I can to support, you know, survival. But like, it's survival. Yeah. 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 It's like parenting. Like a kid. If you're not getting parented, you have to parent yourself, right? You, you gotta know, make sure. Yeah. It's and like, others. yeah. Gotta make sure my little brother or sister gets to eat because they know they ain't getting to eat. Yeah. And, and it's, and it's really interesting to you. I mean, I know we're going on a deep dive here with hunger, but like, again, going back to hunger affecting everybody, you know, so many people across the country, it's, it's, um, folks with a family of four where two adults are working 40 hours a week yep. and the cost is going up on everything. So everything, you know, hunger's looking maybe different than we thought too, right? Um, college students who are doing their best and, and spending money to get educated, right? Um, those are two of the highest growing demographics, college students and families of four with two parents working 40 hours a week are, are two of the highest demographics of wow. growing folk, like folks in, in the numbers of growing that need food assistance. Yeah, it's and, uh, a and, trend, and, and, unfortunately. And you look, at, you look at, at like that group in particular, right? Like college age like you were talking about, those sometimes are folks that like, they don't even really know who or how to like reach out. You know what I mean? Like that's yeah. like, you're trying to figure out how to be, you're in a transitional part of life. You're trying to figure out how to be an adult, how to take care of yourself, how to, and you look at others and you go like, well, they seem to all have it together. How come it's hard for me? We all think everybody, like yeah, everybody yeah. else other than us has it together. <laughs> right? Like, But if you stop and go, is anybody else struggling? And they yeah. go, yeah, yeah, it's, it's wow. Yeah. And that's, that was, you know, um, access, right. And, and, and making it 
feel okay was part of Conscious Alliance really opening the doors to music industry professionals during the pandemic, right? Like, what does it take to go to a food bank for the first time? Well, we know all these folks. We can reach out to them directly and say, yeah. hey, do you need something? Yeah. Come by you know? Yeah. Um, so it's that safe place. It's that knowing access, right? Like at that point, it's like, I've known conscious Alliance for 18 years. I'm going to, I know I can ask them was, was our hope. Right. And I had a gig worker come up to me at electric forest and we, we know each other a little bit and he gave me a hug and he just said, you know, I don't know if I needed that meal the most, but my spirit really needed it. And I really appreciate it. And I know it was a year ago or, you know, a year and a half to whatever, but like, I just want you to know it meant something. And, and the reason I share that is not for me, but for the community that gives to conscious Alliance day in and day out collectively together, we're making an impact. Yeah. It's meaningful, you know, it is because our spirits need to be bolstered also, not just nutritionally, our bodies, you know, um, and that you, you hear it in the stories that you told, like someone got inspired, you know, th- that person that told you that it had a deep meaning for them spiritually and emotionally. And that provides energy that can go a long, long way, like much, especially if we leave that ceiling off. Yeah. It can go to the moon, past the moon, you know. Yeah. That's a beautiful thing, man. Yeah. Well, and how many people have a full refrigerator, but are no, like you're talking about Oteal, you know, you could have a full, a fridge full of food, but you're, you don't have what you need on the, uh, you know, in the, on spirit. the side. Yeah. yeah I mean, exactly. I see it's, it in my business all the time. You that's know? probably why 50% of shit's wasted <laughs> is, you know, well, our model is, you know, if it can't make a profit, but it's like, okay, you know, I don't have to, I don't, we don't have to do away with that model. We just have to yin yang it. Like on the other side of the scale, we need yeah. to do what conscious Alliance is doing. Like, Hey, you're throwing 50% on it. Maybe 25% of it needs to be thrown away. Cause it's not actual food. Sure. <laughs> it's not nutritious. Well, yeah. But yeah. you know, like just like getting inspired to help, help people. Like I see gardening coming back. Yeah. You know, yeah. my mom told me this story when her, her dad who had like a fourth grade education, they went from North Carolina to New York city and he bought a little plot of land because he came from being a farmer and he would tell them, you know, where do you, what do you want to grow? And they were like, Oh dad, we don't want to farm dude. We're in New York. (laughs) It's hard. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. It's hard. And my mom was telling me about how she didn't like it, but she got to pick her thing. And I said, mom, you know, that's coming back because food prices are so high now. You could do vertical gardens. I see community gardens all yeah. over the place. Like that, it's it's back. You yeah. learned your dad gave you something that everybody needs to know right now. Yeah, you know, and they, we don't. I don't know how to freaking farm. No. No. <laughs> uh, somebody bought me a house plant and an outdoor plant during the <laughs> pandemic, and let me tell you, it, it didn't go well for me. Yeah. 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 You, know. you almost get the plan, bring it home and apologize to it right away. Yeah, I'm so sorry. Like, I'm probably going to overwater you, but, <laughs> yeah. um, you know, so, so I guess, you know, in talking all about this, you know, like, and what can people do on an individual level? Of course, we're coming to the point where, you know, Thanksgiving, the holiday yeah. season, things like that. I'm sure there's a spike in donations at your local grocery store, things like that. But, uh, people aren't just hungry on Thanksgiving. Right. So this whole, like the, I can't get over the, the expiration date thing. Like that's, that's kind of freaking me out a little bit. So I want to talk about that. So someone that's listening, they have their local grocery store, right? Like, can they go to their local grocery store and say, Hey, before you get rid of everything, like, is there any, like, can I take stuff? Can I like, what could people do at this point? Like it's it's on a very individual basis from a grocery store level. Um, so where we pick up from is actually from the manufacturer before it even Mm. hits the grocery store, right? Like we're going Uh, to brands distribution centers all across the country and loading up semi. So it's, it's even before it hits the grocery store. Wow. Um, It's, it's hard on, um, 
an individual grocery store basis, but I would say do a little bit of education on best buy dates and realize that, you know, trust your smell, trust your eyes to yeah. say like, does this look good? Does this feel good? Right. Does it smell good? Um, you know, a jar of peanut butter does not go bad the day after the best buy date or even close, right? Olive oil, as we were talking earlier, which we spill all over us, you know, like, uh, it's not going to go bad the day That's after. That's where 50% of my waste yeah, goes exactly. onto my shirt. Just right onto the belly, yeah. yeah. But, you know, like trust in that, like pasta's not, it doesn't go bad the next day. Well, it's right? funny too, because like you buy a thing of salad, right? Like mixed greens or whatever, and you you, you look at the, bottom and there's like maybe one wilted or kind of yeah, yeah, 46 minutes to eat it before you know <laughs> throw the rest out yeah it's 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 yeah it it is a weird like you do look at the date i mean i do yeah well, my story lies about the date on because i do a lot of juices so that spinach i'm buying lots of baby spinach like yeah. lots and i get it you know I look at it and I'm like, okay, (laughs) this is already, and then I'll feel it. You know, spinach is almost kind of uh, like crunchy, almost it's firm when it's it's really, when it's really fresh and when it's all not firm, I'm like, dude, this date is a total lie on here. (laughs) Like this expired or or should have been, you know? So like you say, you got to trust your sight, your smell, Yeah, you know, look, check it out in all the ways that you can. I learned a trick recently to, uh, um, open up the the thing of spinach or mixed greens, right? Put a piece of paper towel on top and flip it over and store it yeah. that way because yeah. you know it, it starts oh. to build condensation, right? Right. And I do so, that, but I just I don't even put the paper and I just turn it upside down. Well, when I use some yeah. off the top and it makes some space, yeah, I turn it upside down and I shake it and then I put it in upside down. I put strawberries in upside down. I put blueberries in upside down because like you say it they all get nasty on the bottom and you just got to flip the bottom then really the next time i, I flip it that. that way and the next it's time a nice I flip perspective it switch you just got to flip it just got to flip keep flip flipping the it yeah <laughs> you know? just keep flipping it yeah. keep like rotating it that's interesting so Especially are you strawberries you can see it like on the bottom they, get, like, they get moldy fast yeah yeah do you um are you in every I know. So you're based out of Boulder, correct? We're based out of Broomfield. We, um, in 2021, another dream came true for us and we opened the doors to our national distribution center in Broomfield, Colorado. Um, wow. We are, national distribution center. Yeah. Talk about no ceiling. Holy crap. Yeah. Uh, we wanted to put all our operations under one roof, get the creativity of, of, you know, 20 years of art that feeds posters and all the food brands and the volunteers, like give us a space to be authentically us. Right. And yeah. um, it started out really, really simple. You know, we, um, we were talking to the big gigantic guys, and they said, you know, how can we support you? You know, their, their first show ever was a benefit for Conscious Alliance. Really? Their first one? Their first wow. one, you know, maybe 50 people. Uh, yeah. And and we said, you know, hey, we we have this dream to to open a national distribution center. They're like, cool. So they donated a dollar per ticket on their entire, uh, for their entire year. And then wow. we went to uh, Ophelia's electric soapbox and we threw a conscious alliance big gigantic benefit concert nice and at the end of the night they uh donated seventy five thousand dollars to conscious alliance (laughs) based on an idea building buildings are way more than 75k but it was this moment to go whoa our community believes in us And all we have to do is ask. And it just, it was a ripple effect, you know, Um, all the 1111 guys got behind it, you know, and, and Madison house and the string cheese and so like everyone, they're like, yeah. And the, the bands and the brands and, and, you know, it's not just about us having a building. Like that's not the, 
it's not like, oh, we, we did it. We have a building. It's not about that. It's about the incredible work we get to do inside of that building. Yeah, the efficiencies yeah. that we have as an organization and the ability to feed more kids and more families across the country. So, you know, we're expanding where we're able to distribute now because we have an amazing home to operate out of. And instead of like, oh, we got to go drive our truck to borrowed warehouse to do this and that. And it took yeah. four hours to do the loop, you know, like, sure. Wow. I like, we're not really sitting still, but. I really say like, it's a place for us to sit still and for people to come to us. So, you know, because of my cerebral palsy, I don't drive. And so I used to spend hours in Ubers, like going to coffee shops to meet people and driving over here to go to this management office. I'm like, come to us, come touch, see and feel what we do. You know, yeah. like bringing the string cheese guys into the distribution center recently. and you know, getting them to walk into the warehouse for the first time to see what they created yeah. from collecting food that, you know, was piled in Jeremy Stein's office and piled in Jesse Erto's office to, Hey, we have a loading area. We have semi <laughs> trucks like they're, you know, like yeah. it's a beautiful thing. And it's a testament to like, to their love. Right to big gigantic, to all these individual spirits that have put love into conscious alliance, not just for us so that we can collectively do the work for the folks. Yeah. Shout nice. out to Jeremy Salkin and yeah. Dominic Lally from big gigantic. Uh, it's like a huge tree that you've grown. It's like providing shade for everyone, fruits dropping out of it, birds are nesting in it. It's like it's grown. It's this amazing. That's cool, man. It's a beautiful so, thing and everybody's welcome, right? So like yeah. this is just the beginning. We're yeah. 20 years in. Let's keep going, right? Sure. Absolutely. Be like the Walmart of <laughs> you know, nonprofits. It's how coming. can people how can people that are listening uh, you know, support on the regional level, on the, you know, conscious alliance level, like what, what, what can, what would help the most right now from folks who are listening and want to yeah. help? So for conscious alliance, every dollar donated provides two meals. So, um, together we can really have an impact. Right. And, and you all brought up like folks want to give during the holidays, but what about the rest of the time? Right. And, um, it's all important. Right. When kids aren't in school and aren't getting that breakfast and lunch from the school, it's important. It's important um, during the holidays because it's getting colder outside. Right. Yeah. And and we're also talking about that spirit lift. So, like, can we provide an elevated meal for that spirit lift too? right? That time together as a family to connect and 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 share. Um we have some wonderful ways for, for folks to get involved. If you go to consciousalliance.org backslash take action, you can complete actions, learn about conscious alliance. And if you complete three of those actions, you get entered to win um, two tickets to any one Red Rock show in 2023. So it's nice. an opportunity to um, educate yourself, learn about conscious alliance, make a donation if you'd like. Um, but it's not too late to take action. It's never too late to take action. Um, uh, whether it's today, next week, you know, whenever that inspiration hits, go to consciousalliance.org slash take action. Yeah. I got to get my kids in on this man. Hmm. Yeah. How many times have you been brought to tears <laughs> over the years by stuff that, I mean, I just, it seems like a continual, um, well of inspiration you know yeah i said to somebody recently we were we were talking to a natural food brand and i, I started crying and i said you know part of this for me is if that still happens i know i'm in the right spot you know mm. 18 years into my journey with conscious alliance it's like i I can't say I can be in tears every day because there's a lot of work to do. Yeah, there's really funny moments. It's okay to laugh and love and 
you know. Um, but I think it's also okay to cry and be like, look, like we can cry for a lot of different reasons. And so that moment of going, all right, if I, if I still cry when I get up on stage and I'm still inspired and, and having a reaction to what we're doing, like we're in the right spot, let's keep going. Yeah. And, the, and this is going to go well beyond me. Like I, you know, it's not about me. Sure. This is, this is uh the bus has left the station with conscious Alliance. And so. Well, that's what wow. brings you to tears. It's not just about you. Like you see the, yeah. the reach, you yeah. know, and we, we need to give ourselves permission. Actually, let's not even give ourselves permission. We shouldn't rob ourselves of one of the most beautiful magical experiences there is you know like a good cry it's one of the best psychedelic magic experiences you yeah. can have yeah because yeah. <laughs> it's always tied to that reason you know yeah, yeah. It's, and uh, when it comes out of nowhere right like it's that magic of like i thought i had it together and now literally right now like my eyes are water i'm like as no, I'm, I'm, tired, right. cry, I'm like here we go <laughs> Just, I, I do it on here too, man. That's why we do this podcast because we really want to get at that thing. You yeah. know, yes, it could come through comedy, music, the yeah. arts, whatever, nonprofits, but it's this thing. It's this thing that brings us to tears for all the right reasons. Yeah. You know, and there's power. There's so much power behind that and in it. You know, we don't realize it. We don't realize no. it. It's not taught in the society enough, no. you know? So no. it's cool because you're, you're demonstrating it. You're teaching by demonstrating and go, Hey, get in, come get in, uh, get on this train, man. It's this train will take you to a magic place. It'll leave you in good tears. Absolutely. And that's, you know, we've said it a few times on, on here, but like, we just don't know what we don't know. And right. like, right. That's it's the not, most important thing to realize in life. Yeah. And it's not calculated. I'm just going with the flow of how I was um, brought up and how I've navigated yeah. life and uh, the challenges and beauties. It's like, how do you do this? It's like, well, I know no other way. And, and, <laughs> yeah, I, don't, yeah. like, I didn't, I didn't write the book on it. There's, you know, this isn't like. Uh, it's this or, or complete failure or just doomed yeah well thank you so much for doing what you're doing man and yeah, we man. are honored to have you on and to help in any way possible and thank uh, you so much you know please come back and keep us updated on what's happening you know because this is something that i mean i just saw it this morning it was very synchronistic that we were talking to you today but like i'm scrolling through maybe it was like bbc news or something but it was just about the world hunger situation yeah. and just how it's just, it's, it's, you can't, if you, if you, if you can look at it and not see it, I don't know how that, like you said, it's like, we didn't come up with this. It's just, you, you either, you have to help <laughs> in any way you possibly can. And it's not just an American problem. It's a world problem. And it's, you know, it's yeah. not just a, a urban problem. It's not just, it's everywhere. Yeah. So I it's everywhere. You. Yeah. And I want to bring it back that, that no action is too small. Right. So yeah. like, um, life can be overwhelming and, um, you know, again, at a young age, I was, I was told and I was taught that I had angels with me and I quickly realized that it wasn't just metaphysical angels. It was people showing up yeah. in my life that believed in me, um, and, and helped elevate me forward and, and saw things in myself that I didn't see in myself. Right. Where the big shift happened for me was when I realized I didn't have to give back to those people that gave to me. I may never have the opportunity. Yeah. But I could drop in, whether it's years or a moment, and be an angel for somebody else, right? So, yeah. yes, Conscious Alliance has grown. It we're, you know, it's it's getting bigger and bigger. But it really comes back to something um, that's inside of all of us, which is awakened compassion, right? Yes. And so, again, no action is too small. We don't have to get overwhelmed by or when we get overwhelmed by 
the magnitude of, of issues that are surrounding us, remember to drop in and just do what we can to be kind to somebody else and, and kind to ourselves. Right. Like, yeah. It's the little things. So, um, it's yeah. like putting that half a sandwich in your pocket. Yeah. yeah. You know, that was huge. Yeah. Yeah. To yeah. his sibling who was waiting at home. Yeah. Buy you an know? extra meal if you can smile at yeah. him. You know, like, again, like it's, it's about the little stuff and that's what <laughs> adds up. So you have hundreds of thousands of music fans across multiple generations and hundreds of bands. Everyone's doing their little part, which is making this beautiful conscious alliance. So thank you for having me today, allowing uh, me the opportunity to elevate conscious alliance voice. And, you know, hopefully we get a new fan out of this and, and, you know, again, who knows, um, someone's going to listen, somebody's going to jump on board and who knows where they'll take conscious alliance. So again, thank you for the opportunity. Absolutely, man. And thank you. I feel so much better today after yeah. doing this podcast <laughs> with you. Yeah. Seriously, man. And keep Seriously. running. Don't stop yeah. running. Whoever told you to stop, no, <laughs> run faster. Thank you. <laughs> we'll be there with Appreciate you. That. So thank you, everyone, thank you. for listening. Go out and Bless support you, Conscious brother. Alliance, everyone. What was that thing again? It was consciousalliance.org forward slash take action? Uh, backslash take action. Backslash take action. And we'll action. be putting all yep. of the information in the notes for the show as well. So awesome. for everyone who's listening, they could check it out. Yeah. Let's Rock do this on. again. Let's do more, you know. Dude, yeah, we'll have absolutely. you on regularly. Like just hit us up anytime. Like if you have something big, you want to like oh. put the word on I me, mean, you know, we don't have... Yeah. We're not Oprah, but you know, we'll do what we it's like amazing. you said, and no action too small. And I know you're going on another podcast today. Like any, you know, bring us up when it feels meaningful and right. Like yeah. that's what's so special about this, you know, is yeah. everyone is a part of it. Everyone can be a part of it. For sure. Yeah. Bless you, man. Yeah. Thank you all so much. 